Hello, in this video we will take a look at how to address data sharing and reuse for the SNSF data management plan. My name is Jennifer Morger, I work in research data management support at the Open Science team at the University of Bern. Over the next 10 minutes we will take a closer look at the following questions from the SNSF DMP template. Questions 4.1, 4.3 and 4.4 cover the topic of where you will publish your data and question 4.2 deals with the necessary restrictions to protect sensitive data. On this slide you can see a summary of the most important points that have to be addressed. You should name the repository where you plan to publish your data. According to SNSF guidelines, your data should be made available in existing public repositories in such a way that anyone can find it, access it and reuse it without restrictions. The chosen repositories have to comply with the fair data principles and it is recommended by the SNSF to choose non-commercial repositories rather than commercial ones. Just as a reminder, it is important to know that the SNSF will only pay for data publication on non-commercial repositories. Applicants must bear the costs of commercial repositories themselves. Additionally, all necessary restrictions should be explained and justified in detail. Such restrictions concern sensitive data or data that cannot be shared for copyright or ethical reasons or can only be shared under restrictions. Now let's have a look at what kind of repositories there are and how you can find one that fits your data and situation. As a first choice, we recommend to use a disciplinary repository if there is one that fits your data. The probably easiest way to find such a repository is to ask colleagues who have already published data. This has the additional advantage that you can also ask for tips and tricks on how to use the repository. Another option is to use Resri data. Resri data is an online directory of data repositories. The directory contains over 2,800 entries and offers the possibility to refine search results with a variety of filters such as subject, content type or keywords. A third option is to look at existing lists from research funders or journals. You could not find a suitable disciplinary repository or do you prefer to publish your data on an institutional repository? Then you can of course do that. The University of Bern offers this Boris Portal a platform where you can publish your research data according to the guidelines of the SNSF. The metadata will be checked by our team before publication and we will be happy to help you with any questions regarding data publication on the platform. A third possibility are the so-called generic repositories. Generic repositories do not specialize in a particular discipline, but allow the publication of data from all research fields. This has the advantage that data from interdisciplinary projects can be stored in one place. In terms of generic repositories, there are two Swiss solutions, OLOS and Swiss UBase. In addition, there are numerous international repositories that can also be used by researchers from Switzerland. The best known of these are Zenodo, which is funded by the European Commission, Harvard Dataverse, Figshare and Dryad. Of course, you do not have to publish all data on the same repository. If you have different data for which there are different subject-specific repositories or only a part of the data fits on a subject-specific repository, you can of course choose more than one repository and combine the different types. It is important to link to the other data whenever possible. Once you have found the appropriate repository, you need to check whether it meets the criteria required by the SNSF. How can you do this? The easiest way is first to check if your repository can be found on the before mentioned list from the SNSF. If the repository is on the list, then all necessary criteria are fulfilled. But please note that this list is not exhaustive. This means that only frequently used repositories are listed. If your repository of choice is not on the list, don't worry. This does not necessarily mean that it does not meet the criteria of the SNSF, but rather that you have to check for the following six points yourself. Does the repository assign a persistent identifier to your dataset? A persistent identifier is a long-lasting reference to a digital resource. The best known form, which you may already know from your journal article, is the DOI. 
But there are also others. It does not have to be a DOI. Furthermore, the repository must allow the publication of general metadata as well as subject-specific metadata. The metadata must always be publicly accessible, even if the data cannot be shared publicly. The general metadata must be entered using a standardized form. In short, the repository must provide a submission form with which you can enter the most important metadata and this must always be publicly available by the repository. Also, a license must be clearly visible. And finally, a long-term preservation plan must be in place. You can check these six points by looking at the policies of the repositories, by checking already published datasets or by asking the operators of the repositories directly. If you are unsure, you can also ask our team for support. For the next question, is my chosen repository commercial or not, the page Re3Data can be used. If you want to check if it is a commercial repository, you can search for it on the Re3Data and find the information under the tab Institution. For example, Figshare is a commercial repository, while Boris Portal is a non-commercial repository. Now to the second important question in this section, are there any limitation to data publication? Some data may be subject to legal, ethical, copyright, confidentiality or other constraint and can therefore not be shared at all or sharing may only be possible under certain conditions. Such restrictions must be clearly described and justified in your DMP. As we will see in a moment, there are different forms of access to published data. Therefore, check whether publication under restricted access together with a data transfer agreement would provide sufficient protection for your data. The general rule is as open as possible, as closed as necessary. Researchers funded by the SNSF are expected to make all data underlying a publication publicly accessible on a data repository as soon as their publication is available. Many data repositories offer to pre-register and to reserve DOIs for datasets prior to their publication. This allows for the inclusion of the DOIs in the corresponding articles, while at the same time enabling the update of the metadata until the publication of the datasets. It is also possible to delay the publication of the data until the manuscript is published by an embargo period. But embargo periods after the manuscript has been released are only possible under exceptional circumstances and have to be clearly justified in your DMP. Finally, I would like to briefly discuss the various data access conditions. Depending on the repository, there are different possibilities. I mention here the five data access conditions which you can find on Boris portal, namely open, embargoed, restricted, closed and metadata only. The first three possibilities have already been mentioned. Here I would like to emphasize again that open access is certainly the default option and is also required by the SNSF unless there are necessary limitations for sensitive data or due to other justified restrictions. Restricted access is for anonymized data that is still too sensitive to share openly or for data which can only be shared under certain conditions due to legal or ethical restrictions. Closed access is for sensitive data which cannot be shared. Even though the data itself cannot be shared, metadata and sometimes documentation and additional information can and should be shared. The entry of metadata on the repository allows to find the information about your data and to get a DOI for your entry. Metadata only is a possibility to register datasets that are already published elsewhere. Very importantly, there are repositories that can handle sensitive data, but always check first if this is the case with the chosen repository. Even if a repository offers different types of access, this does not mean that sensitive data can be uploaded. On Boris Portal, for example, only anonymized data may be uploaded. With the closed access option, the data is stored in a secure location and, if necessary, shared via a secure connection or access is granted locally on-site. Thank you for your attention. This was the last video in our series. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us from the Open Science team.